Today we're playing in a private 2-5 poker game on the Dallas skyline. A lot of familiar faces are here, and of course, what would a Texas small stakes poker game be without the 10, 20, 40, and $80 straddle on? We jump into the action with King 10 of Diamonds, call a $15 raise, and get immediately rewarded by flopping trip 10s. Luke bets out for $40 and I decide just to smooth call. It's a little bit risky because there's a lot of turn cards I wouldn't like to see. However, we lose our three way and we're gonna go heads up to the turn which comes the eight of clubs. $132 in the middle and he nearly pots it for 125. And now I think we have a pretty easy jam. He doesn't have much more behind. I decide to stuff it in here. Most likely he has kings or aces in my opinion, maybe a hand like ace queen or king queen. We get it in, the river card comes the king of clubs, and what do we beat? Pocket aces, so first hand of the night, cracking aces, and taking down a $600 pot. Our 2K stack has ballooned up to $2,400. This very next hand, we look down at ace jack of hearts. I decide to three bet a $20 open from the hijack. Our good buddy Scott puts in the call and we are going heads up to a flop which comes king four three with two hearts. Pretty great board, all things considered. There's 165 in the middle, and I decide to fire out for $55, and Scott immediately clicks it back over to us with a $300 raise. What does he have in this spot? Is he really raising pocket fours or pocket threes from the hijack? I think that's a little bit doubtful, so a lot of heart flush draws would be doing this, and then all of his kings. Scott likes to play his hands fast, so I decide to put in the call. If we spike a heart, obviously we would have the nuts, and of course, we don't see it on the turn, it comes the nine of spades. But when I check it over to Scott on the turn, he checks behind, taking the free card, and the four of hearts peels off on the river. Bang, we river the ace high flush. I can't legally say the nuts here because it's the four of hearts pairing the board, but I still think I need to go for some value. If he has a king, he might not bet himself here because the board has paired, and there's a third heart out there. So I'm gonna go for a chunky bet of $525. And Scott calls super, super fast here. Putting in the snap call, I turn over essentially the nuts and he turns over 10, eight of hearts. So that exact hand, I probably made the minimum against because if I check the river, he bets I could probably raise. And uh, who knows if he would have called or not, but still taking down an $1,800 pot, no complaints about that. All right, I'm coming after the entire family tree. Scott's wife, Amy, decides to raise it up to $30. I look down at a premium once again here and decide to three bet her to $90 from the hijack. Folds back around to Amy and uh, she's coming after my money I took away from her husband. A four bet incoming, $280. I'm definitely not folding, I'm definitely not five betting. I put in the smooth call in the 4-3-3 board is not what we want to see. There is one diamond out there, but when she decides to bet for $500, I can't continue, I fold my cards showing her and she turns over the jiggities. We run the board out and she would have held. She's taken out a 1K pot and uh, I think I know who the breadwinner is in this relationship. Let's go, Amy. All right, Nathan raises the hijack to $20. I look down at the ladies from the button. I three bet him to $60. We're gonna pick up a cold caller in the actions back over to Nathan. He decides to come in for a four bet to 325 and at this point, Alarm bells are already going off in my head. It's not too often you see a cold call to 60. That's pretty strong already. And then a four bet to 325 from the original Razor. Yeah, well, this is gonna get interesting. I put in the call, obviously not folding the ladies. We lose our three way going heads up to a flop, which comes king seven five. Not the best board because now his ace king, king queen, king jack suited all get there. And he decides to bet out small here to which I can't wave the white flag just yet. 225 is way too good of a price. He still could have a hand like ace queen, although I double block that. Ace jack of spades maybe would fire out here. Uh, there's just not too many combinations I beat anymore, but still 225 is way too cheap. I call and the turn comes the four of spades. Nathan does a little bit of Hollywooding here before announcing all in, jamming it for 1750 into the $1,200 pot. It's an overbet jam here on the turn, which is polarizing, meaning he either has a very strong hand like ace king, pocket kings, pocket aces, or pocket sevens, or on the contrary, he has some bluffs like ace jack of spades, ace three of spades, ace 10 of spades. What are his other bluffs? There's not many of them, maybe six, eight, but he's ever four betting that, uh, highly doubt it. So I just think there's way more hands here that have me beat than I beat myself. I fold my cards, I think it's a pretty easy fold in this spot. 
and Nathan kindly turns over King Kong the Cowboys here in Dallas, Texas, gonna take down that nearly 3K pot. If I was in his shoes, I might have gone for a small bet on the turn. However, if he does have some bluffs in this spot, going for a shove can't be the worst play. Just 1,700 and a 1,200. I just can't call with my queens. I lay it down and we're on to the next one where I look down at Jack 10 of hearts from the $40 straddle. If you look over to my left, there is an $80 straddle as well. So we're playing some 2, 5, 10, 20, 40, 80 here in Dallas, Texas. And David in the $20 straddle puts in the call. Surprisingly, no one has put any more money in this pot. No raise to 200 or more. And uh, Jack 10 of hearts seems like a good candidate to do so. I make it $325 to go. If I take this down here, I make like 175 bucks, which is no chump change. And we're gonna get rid of that $80 straddle and go off heads up in position with David who calls from the $20 straddle. That's right, we are off to a flop in a nearly $800 pot, which comes King, Queen, Deuce, a great board for our range and also our exact hand. Any ace or nine would give me a straight. Got some backdoor hard ideas. He checks it over to me. I go small here for 150, and somehow, some way, we get the fold with Jack High taking down that $900 pot. Right, Jack 10 suited, worked for us once. Let's run it back here. I three bet it to $60 over a raise to 15 and a call. We're gonna pick up a few cold callers and we're going extremely multi-way to a flop here. Five ways to be exact. And the board comes queen 10-7 with two spades. The action checks over to me and I debate going for a bet with my second pair. However, there's four other players in the hand. Someone probably has a strong spade. Someone could have a queen, maybe eight, nine for the open and straight draw, king jack, jack nine. I don't think I'm getting very many folds on this flop. I decide to take a free card. The action checks through and the turn comes the six of clubs. Now when the action checks to me for a second time, I think I can start to tell the story that I have a king, queen, queen, jack, ace, 10 type of hand and uh, start the story now and try to get everyone to fold. The price I have in my mind is $160, and we are gonna get looked up by the villain in the small blind. Everybody else relinquishes their hand. So I got three people down, one more to go, and the river comes what seems like a blank, the five of diamonds. Eight, nine already got there on the turn. I think if he didn't have spades in his hand, he probably would have raised that instead of just calling. So I think at best here, he has a weak queen. I do have some showdown value though, so I decide to check behind, allowing some of his spades to bluff. And that's not the case here. He checks behind with seven deuce. We were playing the bounty for 25 bucks a pop, but he also had the flush draw to go along with it. Surprisingly, he did not decide to go for a bluff. I guess it's because he had some showdown value with his pair of sevens, but uh, either way, taking down this pot with second pair on a very connected board, can't complain about that. All right, we see an open from the button to $60 over a $20 straddle. We got David on my right who puts in the call. I decided to defend with ace deuce of spades. I'm not gonna have too many calls from this position. I'm usually gonna be three betting or folding. However, ace deuce of spades can make the nuts and cooler someone flush over flush. We could also make the wheel. So once in a while, I decided to get a little spicy, put in the call instead of being aggressive. And we are gonna go four ways to the flop. The flop gives me top pair on a monotone board, but this is the problem with these ace deuce, ace three, ace four type hands. You have top pair, but you don't really know where you're at. The action checks through on the flop, bringing in the jack of diamonds on the turn. A little bit more of the same on this turn. The action checks through, bringing in the five of diamonds on the river. I don't really think a bet accomplishes much here. I should probably just check and call some bluffs. And that might be a possibility here when Mason in the $20 straddle decides to bet out for $150. It's not too big of a bet, but at the same time, it's not a small one either. 150 into 250, and the action folds around to me. Could he have a hand that has one club in it? Could he have a hand like pocket eights, pocket sevens, pocket sixes that's trying to win this hand considering everyone has checked it over to him three times. Well, I have top pair. I know there's three clubs out there, but I get a little sticky here and put in the call, hoping I beat one of those hands I just mentioned. And that's not the way the cookie crumbles in this one. He turns over 10-8 offsuit, $60 preflop. Mason, you are welcome wherever I play. And uh, yeah, you made the vlog here, a $550 pot coming over your way. And uh, that is just a small donation from Old Wolfgang here. All right, if you look across the table in this next hand, we got Nick from On Tilt dude. Poker. He is a crazy Texas street poker player, and he decides to put out the $20 straddle. David on my right puts in the call. I raise it up to $80. Andrew in the cowboy hat calls. We got Nick, and then David goes for the limp re-raise to $445. This is always so strong. There's no other way around it. 
I'm trying to convince myself that he has a hand like King-10 suited or Ace-5 suited, but I ultimately decide to fold my cards. It just seems like he has Aces, Kings, Queens, Jacks, Ace, King suited. I know I have pocket eights, and uh, maybe if I call, Andrew or Nick would put in the call, giving me kind of decent odds to flop a set. But at the end of the day, it's another $365 to call. And honestly, I don't feel like losing $365 for no reason, so I fold my cards. Puke. Puke. Oh, thank goodness. We're going we're gonna to see that we would have absolutely demolished the flop. Eight, five, deuce. We would have flopped top set against probably an overpair from David. To make matters worse, Nick leads into David, David shoves, and he snap calls, and we would have scooped against David's pocket aces. We would have rivered a boat. What a disaster there. I couldn't find the call. It's $365, Wolfgang. Just put it in the middle. You'll make it back on YouTube ad revenue. Well, uh, that's not the story tonight. I tried to play disciplined here. Two more hands to go. I looked down at Pocket Nueves now. We see a raise to $60 and a three bet from Amy to $230. Now, Amy's three bets are usually pretty strong, so uh, you probably could just fold Pocket Nines, but I'm on a little bit of tilt here from the Pocket Eights hand, and I also think that we're going to get a call from that $60 uh, raise as well. So kind of the same logic I was trying to apply in that last hand. I didn't follow it and uh, now I'm going to do it in this one. I call the 230 and Nick calls as well. We're going three ways to a flop here in between two opponents and it comes 10-6 deuce with two diamonds. With $700 out there, Amy bets a little bit half for 300. It's pretty strong because she's farring out into two opponents but she still could have hands that have a diamond or two diamonds in it. And I have a pair with a nine of diamonds to go along with it. So I put in the call and Nick is gonna spoil this party. He raises it up to 1450 and then shoes us away. Look at that hand motion there. Let's get some Sports Center instant replay on that move there. What does that mean? Does he want us to fold? Is he trying to goad us into calling? Well, it worked against Amy. She puts in the call. I'm not gonna fall for it here. I do have a pair, but it's second pair. And uh, at best, I have a nine high diamond draw, kind of trash. I fold my cards. We're going to run it out once again to see what would have happened here. They get it in by the river in a 4K pot. Nick has 10-6 for two pair, but it's counterfeit. Funny money. Amy has pocket kings. The Cowboys are taking it down. And look at that. Nick was trying to get us to call with two pair. He had us smoked. But look at that. Amy is taking down another massive pot, a 4K one being shipped over to her. And where is Scott to witness all of this madness? All right, last hand of the night. I'm down to $1,500 in my stack. We were up early on in the session, but that's just the way this session was going. We lost all of our profits and then some. I raised it up to $30 with the crabs here. We're going to get a three bet from Nick's girlfriend to $125. David hasn't played a hand in like two hands, so he decides to put in the call for $125 and I call as well. Looking to set mine here and the flop comes six, five, deuce. The action checks over the button and she jams for 135. David pretty much snap calls and I have a gutter to a four. I could also spike one of the remaining two threes in the deck. That kind of was a funny sentence. One of the remaining two threes, one, two, three. Yeah, I'm doing some basic math here. I put in the call, it's kind of a little bit loose, but it's also 2.30 in the morning and I'm stuck. And look at that, the turn comes, the three of diamonds, bang, we turn a set. There is a four liner to a straight now, but David checks it over to me. There's also a backdoor diamond draw. So into the nearly $800 pot comes a half pot size bet. Unfortunately, David folds his cards, but we're going to run out this board heads up. A seven on the river connects the board even further, but queens are no good from the button. We are taking this down and a little bit of consolation money headed over to me. We were up big on the session. Now we're down a little bit. Let's bring it to the outro to see how we did. All right, I got in for 2,000, out for 1860, so I lost 140 in around five hours. Too bad we couldn't have called there with our pocket eights. We would have won an additional 3,500 against David and Nick, but then we got Nick's girlfriend there with pocket threes, so kind of made up for it a tad. If you guys are new here, drop a subscribe, like the video, leave a comment down below what I should make more of. If you like these private games, you are in luck. We've got a few more coming your way out from Texas. We've got a Champions live stream coming up. And then in February, we have the Wolfness live stream with seven of new subscribers. So a lot of fun stuff coming. Good luck on the pelts, you guys. We'll catch you in the next video as always. Peace.